the evangelist John quotes the prophet Isaiah. And, and when I hear this passage, I can't help but repeating in my heart, in my soul, in my, in my mind, those, those words and that lyric from, from God's spell. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And at this point, the band's supposed to kick in. <laughs> but we didn't rehearse that ahead of time. And, and they're appropriate words, even though I've never really seen the whole musical Godspell. These are appropriate words because they're, they're from the prophet. And they fit this season perfectly well because this is the advent of our Lord's coming to us. And so in this spirit of anticipation and joy of this season, those words should, should repeat it in, in our hearts, in our souls. And so even though the band's not going to necessarily kick in, I expect you too to sing along. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Oh, that's a YouTube moment right there. We did good. Let's do it at the mall later on today, okay? Actually, uh, after Mass today, we have a little pizza, and we're heading out caroling at St. Anne's Nursing Home, so you're welcome to join us on that um, after Mass today. Um, so hopefully you can be there. But this spirit of, of joyful anticipation that we prepare the way of the Lord. But the next question that should hit us, that, that should be, be prying in our conscience is, how do we do that? How are you and I supposed to prepare the way of the Lord? And I would propose that our readings today present five steps, five ways that we can prepare for the coming of the Lord. The first should be very clear to us from the gospel passage, both from what's quoted in the prophet Isaiah, that we should make stra straight our crooked ways, or John the Baptist who preaches to us that we need to repent. This is the first stage, the first step for us on preparing the way of the Lord, to acknowledge in our hearts that we have a need of a Savior, to experience the bonds of sin being loosened in our lives so that we may experience new life, new joy, new peace. And so reconciliation is at the heart not only of this season, but at the very heart of Jesus' ministry to us. And if it's at the heart of Jesus' ministry, it must be at the heart of the church's continuing mission. And so we celebrate that reconciliation, that repentance, that, that healing from God in the sacrament of reconciliation. You will find in this weekend's bulletin a listing of all the deanery penance services coming up in the coming weeks. Get out the bullets and look at that and experience that, that beautiful sacrament that's the very heart of Jesus' mission to reconcile us to God, to restore the joyfulness of our youth. So the first step is to be reconciled, to repent, and to experience the freedom that comes in Christ. And this is very closely linked to the second step of our Advent preparation. The prophet Baruch challenges us to take off the robe of our mourning and misery. To take it off. And no doubt we may live in difficult times. We may personally be going through tough times. But let that not overshadow the reality that the advent of our Lord is upon us not just 2,000 years ago, not just in the future, but Christ comes to us today, personally and individually. Christ wants to restore us. This is a time of salvation. And so we should be robed, as the prophet Baruch says, 
in the glory of the Lord. Oh yes, we can continue to go on complaining and grumbling and pointing our finger at the sinfulness of others and our own sinfulness. But that is to miss the point. We are loved. God has done great things for us. And so even in the worst of times, as disciples of Christ, as children of God, with a destiny, with a future, we should be a people of joy. And so that second step in our Advent preparation is to take off the robe of our mourning and misery and to be filled with joy. So we are reconciled with God. We are filled with joy and the third step, St. Paul prays for us. He prays for us that we may grow in our love for one another and that we might discern what is of value. You know, the problems with the hills and the valleys that we hear about from Baruch and from the prophet Isaiah is that in the, when we're in the midst of a mountain range or in the midst of valleys, we can't see the future. It's so easy for us to get lost and to lose sight of that which has of ultimate importance in our life. And what is it that has ultimate value for us? Our salvation. Our salvation. In the midst of our work, our play, our activities, our striving and our sacrifices, if we lose sight of what is of ultimate value, our salvation, we are lost. We do all these things in vain. What good is it for us to accomplish, to receive the whole world and to lose our souls in the process? What is of ultimate value for us and our loved ones is salvation, is to live forever with our God. And so today, in the third step of our Advent preparation, let's recommit ourselves to that which is of ultimate value. That we might see everything else we do leading us to that salvation. We are reconciled. We are filled with joy. And we recommit ourselves to direct our lives and everything we do towards salvation. Which brings up the fourth step. Both St. Paul and the prophet Isaiah, prophet Baruch, challenge us to be robed, to be clothed in justice and righteousness. Let's face it, our actions, what we do in the world, either leads people closer to God or away from God. Our injustices, our unrighteousness as disciples of Christ, as ambassadors of Christ. When people look at us, they see a child of God. Our injustices and our unrighteousness become a stumbling block to others on their journey to God. And so let us also recommit ourselves to act justly that we may lead others closer to God, to live compassionately. Let's face it, not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will be saved, but only those who do the will of our Heavenly Father. That's what Jesus tells us. And so we must act with justice. And so as we recommit ourselves to focus our lives on that which is ultimately of value, let us also recommit ourselves to living lives of justice and righteousness. Which brings us to the fifth step. St. Paul prays with, for us, the community, with joy. With joy because he knows that the good work begun in us will be fulfilled in Christ. He knows this because he understands the power of prayer and the power of God's grace. We too must pray with joy, knowing that our prayers will be answered. You and I must also pray not only for ourselves and our family, but for those who have been separated from us, because God will bring them back. But he's counting on you 
to pray for them and to welcome them back, to be the bridge back to the body of Christ, His church, and the sacraments. Next weekend, we'll be focusing in on extending that invitation, but this week, we can begin by talking with and sharing our journey of faith with those around us. Five steps. It's not too late. Now is the time. Time to be reconciled to God through the sacrament of reconciliation. Time to, to take off that robe of mourning and misery and allow ourselves to be filled with joy. This draws others towards us to be a people of joy. Third, that we be a people that focus our attention on that which has most value, that our lives be about salvation. Four, that we be a people of justice and righteousness. And five, a people of prayer, that we pray, intercede on the behalf of one another, and that we welcome them back. We do these things. And those words that resonate in our hearts, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. These words will resonate with truth.